We are officially here. Welcome to day eight hey. of Game Beyond the Game presents Talk That Talk, your 21-day transition. I am your host, Stan Pearson II, where we look to bring the best athletes uh, from around the world in all different sports to help you discover your Game Beyond the Game. Mm. And I'm also pleased uh, to be joined by the founder mm. of Game Beyond the Game, Prince Daniels Jr. Prince, how you doing? Give us a good word. Oh, man, I'm doing amazing. As I always say, I'm blessed. I'm truly blessed to be here. Another athlete's stories. Uh, I, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they're sharing their heart and I get an opportunity to listen as well. So we're making a difference, in, a difference in the world, one story at a time, no matter where athletes are in the world. Uh, so, And one thing I want everybody to remember, we're all athletes of life. So everybody's an athlete at some point in time in their life. So. Stay Absolutely. Tuned. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Prince. And today we're lucky enough to have Michael Cox as our guest. Mike is from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and was teammates of Prince. Yes, sir. Georgia Tech. <laughs> now, he then went on to a five-year NFL career with the Chiefs mm -hmm. and Falcons fullback. That, by the way, I just say it. What a forgotten position. Full love fullbacks. Anyway, we'll get back to the regular schedule program. <laughs> Mike has been married. Mike has been married to Dana and has two children, Thaddeus and Calvary. Uh, Mike has also been blessed to have found his passion in this game beyond the game in the finance industry, helping families and companies reach success with their financial goals. Mm. Welcome, Mike Cox. Round of applause, stomp your feet wherever you are, because he's good people. He's good people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How you right. doing, Mike? How you feeling? Hey, I'm doing well. Like PJ said, every day is a blessed day. Hey. Uh, not taking anything for, for granted. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be on here. I believe in PJ's mission, what he's doing. I do anything to help him out. He's my oh. brother. Oh, well. Same here, you're my brother too, baby. <laughs> yeah, I feel left out. I wish I had went to Georgia Tech and played. Be my surrogate long. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be family. Be distance cousins. Now, you know, today Mike joins us to share his story of balancing faith and relationships and how fatherhood has changed his perspective on life and even overcoming depression. And I asked him before we hopped on, and what I want to jump into, and you all understand why, is his relationship with his daughter, especially during this time, and how that has blossomed during these very bizarre times. Mike, would you mind jumping into that right away? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can try to, you got to find the good in everything. And it's easy to let this quarantine get you down, you know, not being able to go out, live your day-to-day -day life. But I've been able to find a little hidden blessing in this is I, I grew up, I have an older sister. She's seven years older than me. She's basically another mom. And there she looked after me, helped raise me. And then I have two younger brothers and I have eight nephews. And so I never was around little, little girls. So we were all doing the boy stuff, hitting each other and fighting and everything. And so during this time, I was really able to connect with my daughter. We got in a nice schedule. My son started his school at 8. 8 to 8.30 was Cali and daddy time. We went into the playroom, and I was doing all the things I never did when I was growing up. I was playing with dolls really? and princesses and having tea time and all this stuff. And, uh, again, it was just something that really made my heart happy. And I didn't have this opportunity uh, before because during uh, when my son was born, I was a free agent in the NFL in 2013. So I was literally able to spend every day of my son's first year with him. Wow. And so it was a different story when my daughter was born and I was working. I was working long hours in the medical device field and everything. So now I've just been really thankful that I've been able to take advantage of this time with my daughter and just kind of, you know, watch our relationship flourish, something that I've been praying for. Awesome. Now, as we obviously this is, you know, discussing transition. So what was that transition like specifically, you know, in terms of you know, spending more time with her. Let's say, obviously, as I call it, the Thanos snap happened. You know, everyone's quarantined. You know, so what was that transition like? Day one was like, all right, we're going to do this. Or did you have to kind of feel your way around and get it right? What was that? Yeah, it was kind of, we kind of had to feel ourselves out. We kind of had to get the schedule figured out how we wanted to do stuff, especially with my son being in school, my wife taking the reins with that. Uh, again, I didn't really, I didn't spend as much time with my daughter as I would have liked to. So we kind of were forced to be with each other. We were kind of like twiddling our thumbs in the plane. Like, uh, what do you want to do? I don't know. <laughs> like, oh, you want to have tea time? I was like, all right, sure. I was like, well, how do we do tea time? She showed me and she's very, uh, very alpha. And so she took the reins right from the getting. Daddy, this is how you do this. This is how you do this. <laughs> Our friend, Princess Elsa, she's going to be with us and, and all this. So I just let her take, take hold and run the show. Wow. Now, really quick, was that difficult? Because 
No, you do, you know, especially in your NFL career, being a fullback, you led often, like you led into, you know, the destruction, the chaos to help clear the path. And what it seems like is little Callie, you know, she's leading the way a little bit. So <laughs> how was it, how's it adjusting, you know, in that way? Yeah, it was, again, I'm not sure. I loved being a leader, leading a blocker. But again, it's part of the thing why I love her mother and why she was a big, you know, advocate and helped me so much transitioning out of the game is, she gets that from her mom. Everyone thinks she gets it from her dad, but her mom is the one who's the boss and runs stuff. And a lot of times when I was feeling down, she tells me how it is, and that's something that I need. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure if my daughter could sense that, that, hey, she's got this, this brainwave that I got to tell daddy what's up. That's what she does. <laughs> yeah, that, that's amazing. Now, 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 you did mention your wife, you know, and, uh, and obviously, you know, the kind of personality and character that she may, you know, have about it. How, how'd that happen? How did you find a woman, you know, or were you very intentional about finding a woman that would, you know, be able to lead in that way and put the pieces into the puzzle when they needed to be? It was kind of, it was kind of the first thing that kind of made her stand out was, you know, I, I followed her all over the country. It wasn't the other way around. We went to middle school and high school and went to a pro, uh, homecoming in high school and talked throughout college. The timing never worked out, but, but uh, it was my rookie year in the NFL and, you know, uh, Prince will know this. Coach Modkins was my running back coach for the Chiefs, and he loved Dana. He's like, you better put a ring on her fast bull before someone else snatches her up. And I was like, all right, coach. <laughs> you there. But I love that she was she was as independent as they come. She did everything. She paid her own bills. Was a played college soccer and uh, was a GA and helped pay for everything herself. And so that was kind of something I knew that she genuinely wanted me for me, not because I was the NFL and had this kind of fame and fortune and everything, but she wanted nothing. She wanted no part of my money or anything like that. And that was the kind of thing that I kind of was, you know, kind of blown away by. You don't see that every now and then. All right. Cool. So Prince, if you don't mind me asking, because I know that you all know each other, you know, he was blocking for you and so forth. You all have a, you know, a unique relationship. <laughs> right. What, what have you noticed about Mike's transition, transition from let's say the NFL family and beyond um I, I've, I've known uh, or i've seen a lot of maturity um over the years you know uh it's just incredible how you get a chance to go to battle with somebody uh on a collegiate level and then um in the professional level you get a chance to see them as they continue to keep growing but after the game is over which is the game beyond the game mm -hmm. uh it's it's about that that transition. How do they transition into life? There's there's really so much value in little wins, in these miniature wins that turn into big wins. So thank you for putting that effort forth. And based on what Prince said, it made me want to hop into this question that and then we're gonna, you know, move around it a little bit. You know, he mentioned obviously being able to play college ball. And that's a, a slightly younger version of you. And I can because how life is, I could anticipate that life hasn't always been perfect. You've had your ups and your downs, uh, which we may visit a bit. But to start that off with, what's some, let's say, advice that you would give to the, the younger version of Mike? What would you tell teenage Mike? What would you tell newly pro Mike or college Mike? You know, if you'd like to, you can hop around in there if you, if you want. But yeah, what would you tell that younger version of you? Yeah, yeah, PJ hit the nail on the head. <laughs> I definitely was was immature looking back. I come in there as an 18 year old freshman, you know, grown men like PJ around. But I think the way that I was able to be successful, I found in my mind in college and in the NFL was I was just I was just so focused on the game plan, on my opponent studying film and knowing finding tendencies and what they were giving away, everything that I I would get so nervous until I'd see the stadium and then I'd be fine. But I always, during the game, I would be so focused on there that I never really took the time to enjoy, to see, you know, we're doing something that very few people in the world will ever get to experience, you know, running out at Bobby Dodd Stadium, playing in Death Valley. And it wasn't until really my last year in the NFL when my shoulder started to go, that I was like, wow, I've, I've played nine years of high level football and I've never really smelled the roses and looked at all this really cool stuff. So it wasn't until really my last game, the, uh, NFC Championship game that I was out there for kickoff team and I kind of was able to take it all in and say, man, this is really special and it's something that I, and it's giving me goosebumps right now that I'll never ever forget. And uh, I guess so that's something I would just tell to the, my younger self is, man, just you're doing something special. Just take it in, take it all in this, this experience. You'll never get them back. It's not quite the same when you watch them on DVD and, and replays and stuff, but, you know, just take it all in the, the sound of the crowd and 
you know, the camaraderie and just running out there, how loud it is. And I guess I'm going to just take it all in. You know, what's something that, and we can get to a younger version of you as well, but, you know, in terms of, let's say, athletes in other sports, you know, why would, you know, understanding that piece of game beyond the game be so important to them, whether it's an Olympian in different sport or hockey or track and field, like, you know, you know, basketball and WNBA or what have you. Why is understanding that piece of joy so important to the athlete once, you know, let's say, they're done? Yeah, again, because yeah, you'll never be able to recreate that feeling. I've tried many times of, you know, whether it's going into a big meeting right now, you kind of get the condition response, but it's not quite the same of running out there with your brothers and, and using all that preparation and time. But you, it's not quite the same ever. And I try going to games and get going now. My son's old enough. He goes with me. And he's like, wow, Daddy, it's loud. I said, it's not as loud as it is down there on the 50-yard line right now and stuff. So, again, it's just doing something that, you know, people wish they could do and just, you know, and again, not taking anything for granted and just being able to thank God for the blessings you have to be able to do this opportunity. And, again, it's – the more you think about it, you'll be able to remember it better. And, you know, as I'm getting older, the crowds get a little bit bigger and the plays get a little bit better. But, again, I still, I still got it. Heck, yeah. The story is told by the victors. That's so right. continue to tell your story the way you want it to be told. I love it. Uh, so it's interesting, you know, in, in recognizing these stories and, you know, mentioning, you know, the college you, the pro you. Is there anything that you experienced, let's say, as the teenage you that you'd want to speak to to help ease any pain or anxiety that that super young version of you, you know, has experienced. And again, I, I was very blessed to have, you know, both parents in my life who cared very much for me. They didn't miss a single game and baseball, basketball, football. And I had two younger brothers. My older sister was playing college sports and they were at everything. And, uh, and so it was just something I would just relish this relationship with my father because he was there to push me. He pushed me hard. He's got some different types of tactics that he used that I probably wouldn't <laughs> use my son. But again, I said, just think back and just, just relish those. It's times that I love looking back and I find myself doing with my son. I'm like, whoa, we're there, but just taking little pieces that he did with me and how I want to be a father to my son is uh, just something I want to look for because I have an awesome relationship with my dad and something that I pray to have with my son. So, man, just use this time and look back and see how, you know, I was grown up with my dad. Super cool. P, please. Um, so you mentioned about relish in the moment. And so uh, with Game Beyond the Game, we talk about reaching your ultimate ambition beyond the game. And when you sit back and reflect on those moments of playing, what made you feel like you were great or that you could do this? Yeah, well, it kind of goes into – Kind of adversity. I, again, I was lucky. I was able to hit everything. I wrote a vision board. My goal was to get a scholarship, start in college, play in the NFL. My goal was always seven years to play in the, in the NFL. I didn't quite hit that goal, but it wasn't until really my freshman year of college that I thought, man, I actually think I might be pretty good uh, because we played a, a Sanford Division One AA school my, my first game and I was out there, I was pancaking people. I was playing 38 snaps. I was like, man, this is pretty easy. I was really awake. And the next game we played Saturday night at Clemson. And Slightly had different. Linebackers. Yeah, so, but, uh, but I was like, man, this is, this is pretty – I had pretty good, pretty good uh, summer camp going into it. It's like, man, I think I got a, a real good chance. And, again, Coach Mockins was just a great mentor to me, too. And he always – he brought me in and said, you got a chance to be special, Bull. And I'd go and watch extra film with him, and he, he – coached me as I, I wanted to be a coach when I was done playing I thought too so he, he was good and he said you got a chance to just getting that affirmation from him kind of meant a lot. So when would you say you actually started thinking about the life after football? Yeah it was probably getting into my uh, fourth year in the NFL because that was when uh, my shoulders I've had four shoulder surgeries and that was when uh, they was doing all right until it started going downhill and it went downhill fast and that was like man I'm not I might not be able to hit that seven-year goal and stuff, and uh, that was when uh, you know, I was a year into marriage with Dana, and we were thinking about starting to have kids, and you know, you know, before you're a father, you're very selfish, and like, definitely before you're married, you're very selfish, and all you think about is numero uno, so it's like, man, we started talking about this stuff, and it kind of, yeah, it opened my eyes that, man, there's going to be more than life after football. I mean, I played football for 20 years, and I never really thought much of that, 
after that. So it was kind of when we were married, we kind of started talking about having kids. That was like, yeah, I'm going to have to definitely, you know, mature up and think about what I'm going to do because you know, my body's failing. My mind and heart are still in it, but they just couldn't follow my body. Wow. Why, why did you want to do seven years? I don't know. That was just something that I had when I was little. I said, I, I'm going to grow up and I want to play seven years in the NFL. That seemed like a really good number to me. Felt like I could, you know, have a lot of money after seven years <laughs> and everything. But again, that's just secondary. But I don't know. I, seven was just always stuck in, stuck in my head. Hmm. Nice. That's amazing. So, you, you know, went through all these, you know, changes and, and, uh, and so much growth. What's been, I'll say two things, the, the most difficult thing about fatherhood, especially now because you're in it, right? Uh, and, and regularly there, the most difficult thing and the most rewarding thing about fatherhood, you know, in your game beyond the game. And well, I know the most difficult, difficult thing for me is, I, it goes back to Adam and Eve, is I, I suffer from passivity. You know, sometimes I'm <laughs> passive. That's why it's good to have a fire starter wife because she, she's all gone home. <laughs> And stuff but again but being a father is just making sure you're on the same page as your wife and there'll be times I'll let the kids slide if they you know grab a snack they shouldn't have or maybe a uh, mouth off something they shouldn't or do something they shouldn't do I'll let them slide because I am like I'm passive I don't want to deal with the confrontation or I'm tired from work but it's something that mommy will make sure they get up and they they obey and stuff and then shoot they'll go and tell mommy hey daddy let me do this and I'm like oh <laughs> stuff but it's just something that I have to make a cognitive effort to make sure that I'm I'm there and I'm up there and we're on the same page because you know it's not their fault if they get mixed mixed signals from both me and my wife and everything so I want to, the hardest part for me is just you know after a long day at work the last thing I want to do is go and have to maybe discipline my kids or <laughs> anything like that so I gotta make sure that I'm I, I fight that feeling of, of passivity or, or laziness and, and just go to it nice so last question for me right now is any advice you'd give to, you know, the, a player that's in a relationship right now? Maybe they're, you know, maybe they're in their prime. Maybe they may be getting closer to retirement. What's some relationship advice? What would Mike, the love doctor, tell, you know, someone that's uh, about to get out of retirement or in the league with the wife? I would say just the number one thing you want to look for in a significant other is someone that makes you better than you are. Mm. I say that's probably the thing I'm most thankful for my wife is without her. Like I said, I struggle with passivity. I don't do anything, but she's the one who pushes me out there to you know do stuff in the community, uh, helps the, with, the, with the families and everything. And if it wasn't for her, I, I would just be, I, I'm ha as content playing Xbox on the couch all day long. <laughs> you want someone that pushes you to make yourself better. And in the long run, I mean, you, you can't put a price on that. So I'm just shoot for someone that makes you better than you are and they're better than you deserve. Man, so, okay, you finishing us with some bars as we uh, <laughs> get get close to the end of this. Thank you very much for that, Mike. Yeah, and it was it was trying uh, because again, like I said, my faith was a big, you know, it's a big part of me, and I thought I was probably I was very firmly foundationed in my faith. But man, even that, like I said, I played football for twenty years. I was known as you know Mike, the good football player, and I was like, nah. I didn't think I'd miss it as bad as much as it was. It's a little different when you walk into a restaurant and everyone's like, hey, yeah, Coxie, don't worry about the bill. And I walk in when I'm done playing, they're like, who's this a guy? They're like, go, oh, come on. And stuff, you know, it hurts. I mean, it, it's hard to hear those little voices in your head to say, yeah, those people, they don't care about you anymore, all that stuff. And they, just having my wife there, like I said, she's a go-getter and she'll, she tells me, you know, suck it up. You're tough. You're a fullback. You, you can't let these voices go in there. You got you to gotta push through it. And stuff. And so I'm again so thankful for her. If it wasn't for her, man, who knows what I'd be doing and stuff. And those voices probably would have consumed my thoughts. And I mean, I could have gone down a dark road for sure. Man, man. Is, is there anything you do? I'm sorry. Uh, is there anything you do on a regular basis? You know, to keep those voices at bay or to keep you positive? You know. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, I think uh, I do a daily devotional. I would go through them yearly. Tony uh, Tony Evans, the one I'm in now. The, Tony Dungy, whatever, he just kind of got to, I think it, I got to stay in the word. If I'm not in it, you know, you got to fill your mind with something and it better be good stuff. If not, then something bad will, will take that empty space. And I can definitely tell when I'm not in my, not in my word and stuff. Cause you know, he's, those voices creep in telling you, oh, do this, do that, look at this, look at that. And if I'm not on my game, then that's when those voices creep in. Man, thank you so much. Truly appreciate it. 
Prince, was there another question? I apologize. Uh, no, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm, pr I'm super proud of you, bro. I'm super proud of you, man. I just want to tell you. No that. One, tell you. I, I want to tell you, no one's rooting for, for uh, Prince Daniels more than, than me. You know, I was a fullback. <laughs> I lived vicariously through him. So when he ran for 100, 200 yards, I was, felt like I was running for 100, 200 yards. So uh, hey, I love man. him. And that time at Game Beyond the Game out there was, uh, again, I can't recommend it enough. It was, you got that locker room feeling again that, you know, that's the thing we miss almost more than the game itself is that camaraderie and just being there with Haloti and, yeah. and Siano and just everybody. And uh, right. Right. it was just, it was just awesome. So I just loved even that part there, let alone all the, all the knowledge that we got too. But I mean, Oh man, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Man, man, this is my purpose, my mission in life. And I'm going to make sure that we always continue to do that because nobody helps us out after we're done with the game. Basketball players, football players, um, baseball, you know, just NHL, just none of these athletes, because none of these athletes have this when they leave the game. We had an interview with Rob Sims. Rob Sims said, once you leave the game, your spouse still expects for you to be a what, Stan? A champion. A champion. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes after the game, you're too tired to even try to be a champion because you put so much hard work into your craft. And you get home and it's just like, I would rather play Xbox and, you know, kick my feet up and, and or PlayStation. And, and, but, you know, outside of the family, we still need that, that exalting, that lift me up. Like, I, I can do it. I can achieve because you've achieved something so great in this, in, in this sport, in the sport, in this platform that we've had. And now it is time to achieve more greatness in your life. And so, um, that's why we build a community where we can continue to keep building each other's up, each other up. Because think about it, you've reached a pinnacle, you know, mentally. And so now it's like, what's next? Mm -hmm. You know, game beyond the game. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Mike, last thing for me is, you know, where can people find you, learn more about you, get some of that financial planning advice and resource if it's out there from you? How can, how can we find you? How can we uh, learn from you? Yeah, well, uh, at least on on Facebook, I got the uh, the wife up duel. We share our Facebook together. Is that but I'm on right? Twitter. Oh yeah, she, she, she got there. You know, Facebook is it can do a lot of bad stuff for you, but we can use it keep in, in track with my old friends and stuff. For my, but, but yep, I'm on Twitter at Mike Cox 42, and uh, again LinkedIn at at Mike Cox. You can hit me up on there and check me out wherever. Nice, awesome man. Anything else, Prince? Before we close out. No, I think that's it, man. I think I think that's it, man. It's just been <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Man, fantastic. Mike, thank you so very much for uh, not just sharing yourself and your story with us, but also your family, your ups, your downs, and how you overcome them along the way. And please continue to join us uh, tomorrow, day nine, as we continue to show you how you can improve on your game beyond the game. Have a hey. good one. Hey, hey. So, so long, everybody. Enjoy a beautiful and prosperous day. Make sure you find joy within yourself because that's where it begins. Other than that, have a good one, man. Peace.